ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد امرنا الله تعالى بذلك في كتابه الكريم فقال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا ثم اما بعد dear brothers and sisters i wish for you to imagine if you were traveling in the desert and as you're walking through the desert and you sat down a snake bites you with the snap of the snake you go to the doctor and the doctor does not look at the bite the bite actually is usually something very insignificant very small people have been cut by knives and people can cut their fingers there's no problem the doctor is worried about something else the doctor is worried about the poison that has entered your body because what will really kill you is not the bite, not the incident, not the situation that happened, but it will be the poison that runs through your veins, the anger that will boil and poison you and hurt you. The Prophet ﷺ was once asked some nasiha, was once asked some advice from a person, a man came to him. A hadith that we're all familiar with. With all the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, this hadith is one of the most popular hadith. The man said, Ausini Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, Ausini, give me some advice, O Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet said, La taghdab. He said, Don't get angry. So then the man said, Ya Rasulullah, give me some more advice. And the Prophet said, La taghdab. Wait a second, he just said that. But he said it again. So the man said, O Messenger of Allah, give me some more advice. And the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تغضب. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. It's a point blank commandment. Do not become angry. The hadith of the man who came to the Prophet ﷺ, we all hear about it. The one where he asked him, who is the most worthy of my friendship? And the Prophet ﷺ said, your mother, your mother, your mother, all our mothers know this hadith. And all the fathers know this hadith as well. The emphasis on taking care of the mother. Now I'm telling you that the same way that the Prophet ﷺ answered that hadith, he answered this man's nasiha, that question for asking for nasiha. He said, La taghda. When things happen to us in life, there are certain things that we are patient for and that we don't get angry at. Sometimes the weather, many people, they're not angry at the weather and other things. But then there are other situations where we're commanded to be patient, commanded to not get angry, such as in marital relations, in the marital relationship with the, between a husband and wife, or for example, with your brothers, with your sisters. Commanded, no, don't become angry, but who follows the sunnah of the Prophet A man came to the Prophet the companion sitting with the Messenger of Allah, and the Prophet ﷺ asked them a question. He said, who is the strong person amongst you? Who is strong? And even in our culture, in our culture, what do we consider the strong person to be? In our culture, if we were going to answer that question, we would say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the one with the biggest biceps. This is our definition of strength. Specifically the bicep muscle, just by itself. This is the strength for us. Or someone else will say this type of car or something. This is strength. The companions, radiallahu anhu, at least they had, you know, uh, you know, this example. They said, "O Messenger of Allah, the one whom no one else can defeat them in an ultimate fighting battle. If they were to fight in a battle, in a war, in a in a in a wrestling match, a real one, 
then this would be the strong person amongst us. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no. Indeed, the strongest person amongst you, الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ The one who can hold back his anger at the time when the situation would call for him to be angry. Yet he holds back. Sometimes situations happen to me. And then someone would say, Oh Muhammad, why don't you get angry? And I would say to them, Wallahi, anger is the easiest thing to do. Getting angry is so easy. In fact, it takes no effort to get angry. In fact, it is a sign of weakness. On the opposite, the person that can control themselves, the person who has patience, as the Prophet ﷺ said, الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ He or she is the strongest amongst you. They are the strongest. So two people, two brothers, one of them loses control and gets angry, and the other one holds and refrains and keeps quiet, which one is the, is the stronger one in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who was patient. The one who held back his anger. The companions that was were once traveling with the Prophet وسلم, and the man, his camel sat down. It wouldn't move. And so the man got angry at the camel. And he said to the camel, he said, Sir, la'anakillah. He said, move forward, O camel, may Allah curse you. Just something on the tongues. Curse, another word for curse is cussing or swearing. They all come from the same root. It comes from the anger. He got angry at his riding animal. And so the Prophet ﷺ heard what he said. And he told him, get off your camel. لا تصاحبنا بملعون. He said, get off your camel and don't continue and walk with us and proceed forward with us in a riding animal that you have cursed. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تدعو على أنفسكم. He said, don't curse yourselves. Don't get angry and curse yourselves. ولا تدعو على أموالكم. And do not curse your properties. ولا تدعو على أولادكم. And do not curse your children. For it may be, the Prophet ﷺ said, that a person would make this statement, make this curse, at a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers all the dua. And this person's statement, which he doesn't wish to be answered, will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this example, now when we're speaking about anger, when I initially said anger, you might have thought of very small situations. But I want you to escalate the anger. Where does the escalation of anger go to? It goes to the cutting off of family relationships. One of the most major sins in Islam. The escalation of anger goes to divorce. And it goes to wife abuse or a husband and, and ruins the uh, relationships. You escalate and the person may even say statements of kufr. Statements of nifaq. This is the escalation of the anger that the Prophet ﷺ forbade us from. A boy will ask his mother and insist, give me the keys to the car, give me the keys to the car, give me the keys to the car. And then this mother, who has not trained her tongue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would say something to the effect of, may you never come home. And these statements are said, they're curses. And this boy will leave the house and will never come back home. And she'll spend the rest of her life knowing that she disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in her tongue and, and the anger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger forbade her from, she kept going forward into it, disobeying Allah in, in this until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something very bad took place from this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and give us sanctuary and protection. Dear brothers and sisters, I want to give you this example. There was once one of the tabi'een, a great scholar, and he had a servant girl, a slave girl, and she broke something, something very expensive. She had tipped it, it broke, and he immediately became angry. I call this snap anger. You know how cars can go very fast, very quickly? People's anger is faster than that. In a split second, the person goes zero to a hundred, and they're completely angry. This guy, he's a scholar. And he got so angry like that. And then this slave girl, when she saw...